Praise God. <laughs> well, let's open our Bibles to Luke chapter 9, the Gospel of Luke chapter number 9. Gospel of Luke chapter number 9. When you found your place, I'll ask you to stand in honor to the reading of God's Word for prayer. The Gospel of St. Luke chapter number 9. When entitled the message tonight, Sanctification, as we look into the Scripture here, we find 39 times in this chapter the word and, and we find five times the word but. Uh, we know these are conjunctions that connect, uh, conjunctions that connect, I should say, and as, as we see uh, some of these accounts that are pinned down in, uh, in uh, the Gospel of Luke chapter 9, and uh, we see some things that are helpful to us in our Christian walk. Something that will do something for us if we'll just look at it. So let's look at the Word of God beginning in verse number 23. And the Word of God says, And he said to them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save me. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself? or be cast away. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. But I tell you the truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. And it came to pass about eight days after these things he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistering. And he beheld, and there talked with him two men, which were, which were Moses and Elias, who appeared in glory and spake of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Peter said uh, that Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep, and when they were awake, they saw his glory, and the two men that stood with him. When it came to pass, as they departed from him, Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee, one for Moses, and one for Elias, not knowing what he said. While he thus spake, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as he entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved Son, hear him. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone, and they kept it closed, and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. Father, as I approach thy throne once again, I plead that the Holy Spirit of God would just move upon me, that you would use me just for a little while as your vessel and your mouthpiece. I plead now, Father, that you depart unto us the truths of thy word, Lord, that you would strengthen us and help us, Father, to walk by faith, and, Lord, that we might be the vessels that you could use. Lord, you know the, the appointed time of each one of us, but I plead, dear God, that you would help us, Father, to be actively working when Jesus comes. Lord, would you do that which no one else can do? Lord, I pray that you'd feed us, Lord, from the word of God tonight. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you. May be seated. As we look into the scripture tonight in verses 23 through 36 that we have just read, we find these two accounts certainly go together. First of all, we find that uh, sonship is instantaneously. Uh, the moment that you trust Christ as your Savior, then sonship is given unto every one of us. But we find that sanctification is a process. Uh, we find as we look into the Word of God, as Jesus begins to uh, explain uh, to his disciples the cause of discipleship. Now we know that there is certainly a cause if we're going to follow the Lord. Uh, we know that uh, certainly it's not going to be a bed of roses. Uh, some are not going to go to, to heaven on a flowery bed of bees and others are going to have to be persecuted. But we know that each and every one of us that's going to be a disciple of the Lord Jesus, then we're going to face persecution according to the Word of God. So he begins to lay out to his disciples, and by the word a disciple is a follower of one's teaching. So we find then that uh, 
that the Lord here begins to expound upon those uh, in how that they can have a closer communion with him. In verse number 23, And he said unto them all, If, now here's the condition, If any man will come after me, do what? Let him deny himself. The hardest thing in all this world for you and I in a body of flesh is to deny ourselves. Now, I know we're all just alike. We're all cut out of the same mold. We're just alike. And it's hard to deny ourselves. I know that those high cholesterol foods, I know they're bad for me. That's just what I want. It's just that stuff that's not good for me. And yeah, I can tell you, I could just eat it and eat it and eat it. It's not good for me. I've got to deny myself of certain things. Jesus said, if you're going to be my disciple, you're going to have to take up the cross and you're going to have to deny self. Now, that's going to be against the flesh. There's no way that we can follow the flesh and to follow God. Now, we can't serve two masters. Either we're going to hate the one and love the other, love the one and hate the other. And so we find then that he tells us here, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily. It didn't just say take up his cross one time, but it says take up his cross daily. And so we find that sanctification is a process. We're going to get over into Romans chapter uh, 12 in just a minute. But we find uh, certainly as we see sanctification is a work of God in us. And so we find that it is a process as we walk with God, as we live with God, and the Word of God begins to work effectively in our lives. Hey, uh, we find here that Jesus is telling the disciples, whosoever will save his life shall lose it. You live for self, then you've lost all your rewards when you get on the other side. But whosoever will love or will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. Now, if we're willing to lose our life for his sake, what does he mean by that? Does he mean that we're supposed to go out and hang on a cross? Absolutely not. What does he mean? He simply means that uh, my desires have to be put aside. My desires have to be lost. And that I've got to follow the desires of God. How am I going to know the desires of God? Read the Word of God. And God's going to speak to us through the Spirit of God. He's going to reveal to us what we need to do. And as we do that, hey, it won't be popular with the world. There'll none of us ever be popular with this world if you're going to follow the Lord Jesus. You can't have it both ways. The Word of God makes it plain that you cannot follow God and follow man. You can't do it. Now, I know this is not popular preaching, but nonetheless, it's the Word of God. It's what we need in our day and time. It's what I need. If you don't need it, then just close your ears. I'm going to preach it anyway. And so we find that, uh, that Jesus tells them, Whosoever will save his life, uh, do what now? Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. Say, Brother Harley, what's he talking about? If you live for self, then when you get on the other side, you've lost your rewards. Do you see what he's saying? He said, but if, if you live for me, but whosoever will lose his life, in other words, here. Did you know that so-and-so gave up? I mean, a high-paying job to go to the mission field and to worry about meager pennies. Can you imagine someone that would give up making a hundred, two hundred, three hundred thousand dollars a year to go to the mission field and to, hey, to have twenty or thirty thousand dollars a year coming in by faith? Can you imagine somebody giving up a life? All of that would have bought the pleasures of this life. Can you imagine them doing that? This is what Jesus is talking about. If you lose your life in uh, this life, then you're going to gain it. Now, our rewards are on the other side. Hey, our rewards are not here, but our rewards are on the other side. Now, this is what he says, But whosoever will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. For what is a man advantaged if he gain the whole world and lose himself or be cast away? What would, he, what, what, what would he advantage? 
Now, I, I could mention some famous names. I believe it would be all, uh, perfectly in order. We know that Rockefeller was a rich man. We know that no doubt Elvis Presley was a rich man. We can go to uh, Memphis, Tennessee and see the mansion that he had on this side. Now, I don't know what happened to him uh, uh, but just before he died. I don't know. But I do know the life that he lived here and his life that he lived here was for the mansion that he had here. You follow me? So if we live for the mansions that we've got in here, then there'll be no uh, nothing on the other side. If you're truly saved, you've lost your rewards. This is what Jesus is telling them. For what is a man advantaged if he shall gain the whole world? Now I'm gonna I'm just gonna bear my heart and show you something tonight. My my first wife was as faithful as she could be. But if it hadn't been for cancer, she'd have died and went to hell. She got saved, what, six or seven months to the day before she died. I have her testimony written down the back of this book. Now, I'm going to share something with you. Now, you know, she was as good, uh, hey, boy, she was as good a person as you could ever ask. She was as faithful a wife as you could ever ask. But I moved to Candler, North Carolina. I bought a place that had two acres or so of ground with it. I tried to busy myself. And you know, I'd, I'd go out, I'd, I'd mow the lawn, I'd manicure the lawn, and, and I'd go out after I finished all that, I'd sit and I'd look at it and I'd say, well, didn't do me no good. Now, I'm bringing you to a point this minute. Didn't do me no good. Now, what are you saying, Brother Harley? I am saying that looking at all of this caused me to realize all of that wasn't where it was at. See, God had to work in my life to bring me to the point that those worldly things wasn't where it was at. Wasn't where it was at. As I looked at them and I realized, wow, my treasures is on the other side. You follow what I'm saying? Sometimes God has to do something drastic in your life to cause you to see, and He did me. He caused me to see. There's nothing. There's nothing in this life. My treasures are on the other side. My treasures are on the other side. But we find that uh, here that, uh, that He tells us uh, in verse number 26, For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. What is he saying? He's simply saying that if we're ashamed of the Word of God, we're not going to be sending all rewards on the other side. What am I saying? I'm saying that uh, the Lord said here, if our mind is not on the things of God and upon the hey, uh, uh, upon the souls of men, then we're not going to be storing up our treasures in heaven. We're not going to be storing up our treasures in heaven. If we're ashamed of Him and ashamed of His words. Now, if we're not ashamed of His words, then we're going to actively be induced at being found working when Jesus comes. But now wait a minute. Let's back up just a minute. Now, if I'm living for self, I don't see no need for this. Am I making sense? I don't see no need for this. If I'm living, living for self, I've got better things to occupy my time. There's no use in me bothering with that. I'm saved and there's no use in me bothering with that. What have I done? What have I done? Now the message that Jesus was giving was to his disciples. He said, He said, if you're ashamed of me and of my words, if you're not ashamed, what will we do? Now, I'm going to tell you once again, you've heard it, and I'm going to tell you again. I was the most bashful human being that you could have run into. I mean, growing up until I got saved at the age of 37. 
I mean, I was fashion. You'd have thought I crawled out from under a rock somewhere. I was fashion. But you know what? When the Lord Jesus saved me, He changed me and turned me around. He gave me holy boldness. I had a desire to begin working with the Lord. He said, if you're ashamed of me and of my words, then I'm going to be ashamed of you. But notice how this goes together with uh, here with uh, the transfiguration, the story of the transfiguration. We see certainly sanctification. Now, as we look at verse number 27, Jesus said, and by the way, uh, there may be a break in your Bible, but these two goes together. How do we know that? Because of the first word in verse number 27. But, that a conjunction that connects? Connects what's just been said. They said, but I tell you the truth, there be st some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. Now, certainly he must have been talking about the transfiguration. Peter, James, and John, as he took the three disciples, and this seems to be the three that uh, on other occasions that he took with him also. But he took Peter, James, and John and, and went up on the mount and was transfigured before them. Was transfigured before them. Now, we know this, uh, this word transfigured is where we get our English word metamorphosis. What is that? That's a changing from the inside. And uh, we know that the, the, uh, the Gospels here you each give different accounts of what happened unto Jesus. One says his clothes were bright and, and shining, uh, gleaming. Then we find that uh, others talks about uh, his face and so forth. But we know and realize that he was transfigured before them. And they saw his glory. Now, uh, by the way, that those that are fallen self will never see his glory. Those that are following the desires of the flesh will never see his glory. But those that were true disciples of the Lord Jesus, then they were privileged to go with him and to see the glory of the Lord Jesus. Now let's flip over to Romans chapter 12 and verses 1 and 2. And we see in Romans chapter 12, and here the apostle Paul said, I beseech you. Who is he speaking to? The lost? No, no, no. He said, I beseech you therefore, brethren. He said, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. And this living sacrifice, by the way, is dying out to self and it is becoming a uh, sacrifice for the Lord Jesus. Taking up our cross daily. You know what we just read in Luke 9? taking up our cross daily and following Him. Now we find that, uh, he said, by the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. How? Holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now if we will do that, then notice in verse number 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. How's that going to take place, Brother Harley? By the Word of God. By the Holy Spirit using the Word of God in our lives. Now, we know that uh, if we're conformed to this world, we're going to follow the flesh. I can read over in, in uh, Luke chapter 9. It says, And whosoever will save his life shall lose it. That's what we're talking about. And it's what we see in uh, Romans 12, 1. Uh, he said here uh, that we're to present our bodies a living sacrifice. If we do not do that, then we're living for self. We're living for self. And the Lord Jesus said you're going to lose it. You're going to lose your rewards. 
He said, a holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. There's nothing unreasonable about God asking us to present our bodies a living sacrifice. By the way, he said, a living sacrifice. I cannot crucify myself. There's none of us that can crucify ourselves. Thought and think about what I'm saying just a, a few minutes. There's no one that can nail us to the cross. It takes someone else to nail us to the cross. We can't do that ourselves. We cannot crucify ourselves, but it must be a dying out of self. And as we die out to self and allow the Word of God to work in our lives, then God can use us. God can use us. What did he say? If any man uh, lose his life, and, uh, if any man will lose his life for my sake, the same shall save it. But over in Romans 12, 1, he said, if you present your bodies a living sacrifice, how? Holy, acceptable unto God. Holy, acceptable unto God. What's going to take place? He said, and be not conformed to this world. Now, as I see that word uh, conform, I think of jello. And uh, I think about the many different designs that you can make with that jelly. Many, many of the ladies here, no doubt, have got different types of molds, and they can make pine trees. Uh, they can make all sorts of different things. They've got the different types of molds. And all they have to do is, is to make that little liquid stuff called uh, jello. And here it is, the liquid form, and they pour it into these molds. And, uh, you know, they let it sit for a little while. I mean, they put it in the refrigerator or whatever. But after a while, they can come back, and they can turn that mold upside down and, and dump that uh, that stuff that's in there, that jello that's in there. And you know what? It's conformed to that mold. Well, here the Word of God says for us to be not conformed to this world. What is he saying? Boy, is there a message in this. He's saying for us not to look like the world, not to act like the world, and not to be part of the world. We are separate. We are dedicated. We are holy unto the Lord. And we are to be set aside to serve the Lord. Sanctification is a process that takes place in our lives day by day as we walk with the Lord. Hey, I'm telling you, if you've been saved for any amount of time, you ought not to still be a babe in Christ, but you ought to grow just a little bit. You ought to grow just a little in the Lord Jesus Christ. There ought to be some fruit in a person's life after they've been saved just a little while. There ought to be some fruit in their life. I declare to you, if you hey, if you allow the Word of God to conform you uh, to the image of Christ, there will be some fruit in our life. Then he tells us, be not. We could also say, but, but be. And be not conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. What's that going to do, Brother Harley? Well, it tells us that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Did you know that a lot of us suffer physically and it's in the perfect will of God? Look at Job. Job suffered more probably than any other human being. Aside from Jesus, that is. But it was in the perfect will of God. Even his wife turned against him and told him, curse God and die. Why don't you just curse God and die? All hell may come against you. But your sickness may be in the perfect will of God. We're not all promised uh, excellent health from the day of birth until the day of death. We're not all promised that. But whatever that we're called upon to go through, God's grace is sufficient. God's grace is sufficient. Sanctification, as, as we look back at Luke chapter 9, and uh, we find in verse number 28, And it came to pass about an eight days after these things, he took Peter, John, and James, and went upon uh, unto a mountain to pray. 
And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moses and Elias. Moses and Elijah of the law and the prophets, and right smack dab in the middle of the law and the prophets was the Lord Jesus, the one that come to fulfill the law and the prophets. Isn't that amazing uh, that, hey, that the disciples here was able to look upon uh, Jesus as he talked with Moses and Elijah? And yes, we find also that uh, Moses is a type of those that's going, uh, those saints of God uh, that have gone on that are going to be called forth from the grave. But we find that Elijah is a, a, a hey, is a type of those uh, that have been raptured out. Praise God, you and I, hey, we could be part of the number that's raptured out. We're not dead yet. We've still got the hope of the Lord Jesus coming back for his own. I'm glad, thank God, that I'm looking for him to come at any moment. I'm listening for the trump of God. It could sound even tonight, but I believe that he's coming back. I believe it could be in my generation. I know the Apostle Paul was looking for him in his generation, but I'm looking for him in my day. I believe that he's coming back just like he said he would, and I believe that he's coming for those that are looking for him. Now, we know that as he appeared in glory in verse number 31 and spake of his decease or his death, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But notice this. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory. I'm telling you, church, the Word of God tells us that if we'll awaken out of sleep, it's high time that we awoke out of sleep. It's high time that we awoke out of sleep. You know what's going to happen? He's going to manifest himself. When, hey, when, when we get into word that we said, boy, you can just feel the presence of God. You know what's happened? Some saints of God have woken up been calling upon God. You follow me? You see what I'm saying? When you get into that, you see uh, that there's some saints of God that's been awoken out of sleep. They've been calling upon God, and God begins to move in the midst, and you, hey, you begin to feel the presence of God. Yes, I understand that God indwells every believer. But I'm glad that we can see his manifestation of the power of God. And I'll tell you, that does something. That does something when we see the manifestation of the power of God just moving in our midst. But Peter and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. I believe the true church is asleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory. Now, notice in verse 33. And that came to pass as they departed from him. Peter said unto Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elias, not knowing what he said. Peter was one to open his mouth before he realized what he had said. Well, he's done that many times, but, uh, you know, I'll have to say of Peter, at least he was eager to do something. Remember back in the 80s, right after I got saved, it didn't take much note before I got saved, but right after I got saved, I, I remember reading on a church uh, sign, and uh, uh, this uh, was written, I had rather have tried and failed than to fail to try. I say that over and over again until you pick up on it. I'd rather have tried and failed than to fail to try. Now, here, Peter, uh, he looks at, at the Lord and what he sees here, and he's so overwhelmed at what he says. But while he thus spoke, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud saying, Can you imagine? As Peter, James, and John are here onlookers, and they're looking at the Lord Jesus, 
Moses and Elijah. And now here comes this cloud and overshadows them. They're just kind of taken over with this cloud as it begins to hover over them. They're taken into that cloud. Can you imagine Peter, James, and John? Can you imagine what's going through their mind? But we find as they enter into the cloud, there came a voice out of the cloud saying, This is my beloved Son. Hear Him. You know what that speaks to me? Experiences are good. Experiences are something, hey, I desire to have experiences. But I can't live on experiences. I told you many times about the great experience of Parchman, Mississippi. But I can't live off of that. I've forgotten some of that. But I declare to you, he, the Word of God, he said, Hear ye him. It's the Word of God. The Word of God is afresh and anew every day and every time that we read it. The experiences will come and go. And hey, they will fade out of our memory. But I'm glad that the Word of God will go on and go on. It'll keep giving. It's fresh day in and day out. The Word of God will never grow old. I, I tell you, it'll feed your soul when you're down and out. When you're hungry, it'll feed your soul. The Word of God will do for you what nothing else can do when you're down and lonely and nowhere to turn. You can take the Word of God and turn to the Word of God and begin to look and read in the Word of God and the Spirit of God will begin to speak to your heart and things will begin to happen in your heart and everything will begin to look different because the Word of God is working in your life. Amen. But those experiences, they're in the past. It's good. It's good while we're there, but we can't live off experiences. We can't live off of what's in the past. We can't live off of that. We've got to have something fresh. We've got to have something that's new. We've got to have something that, uh, that'll that speak to us here and now. We need something that's fresh. Now, this is the reason I believe that Jesus said, Hear him. Notice what he said. This is my beloved son. Hear him. How are you going to hear it? The Word of God. As we read the Word of God. And when the voice was passed, Jesus was found alone. So they were able to see Moses and Elijah. But yet after the cloud left, so did Moses and Elijah. Now what are you going to do, boys? Are you going to follow the Lord Jesus? When you and I first got saved, the most joyful time in our life, it wasn't something was wrong. I'm, I'm telling you, it was a joyful day when I got saved. And I realized I'm heaven bound. As Mays Jackson said, with a hammer down. Praise God. I'm glad, thank God, that I'm a child of His. But of all the things that God's done in my life, I've got to hang on to the Word of God. Hear Him. Hear Him. Sanctification is a process. It's a process that works in us day by day. What did he say in verses 23 through 26? Take up your cross and follow him. Let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow him. Daily, daily. Can't live by bread alone, but by what? By every word of God. Am I right? Am I right? So it's daily. If I feed off of the word, if I, if I feed off of the physical food to feed the physical body, then it does it not stand the reason that I have to feed off of the word of God to feed the spiritual man on the inside of me in order to gain? 
gained the advantage over the A, over the old man. I've got two natures you have too. One's a warrant against the other. Who are you going to feed? You're gonna call, if you're going to cause the first one to die out, you're going to have to feed the second one. Glory to God. When we get to reading the Word of God and studying the Word of God, I'll tell you, it's endless. It's absolutely endless. It wouldn't make any difference how long you studied it. It's still a fresh and a new. I, I, I declare to you, it's a well of water springing up into eternal life. I'm glad, thank God tonight, that the Word of God will never be dull to the child of God. It'll, hey, it'll hold something that's fresh and a new. Hey, I declare to you, it stirs my heart just as much after I've been saved since July 1983. It stirs my heart just as much or more today than it did when I got saved. The Word of God. I'm glad for those old-fashioned songs. I'm glad when they can sing Amazing Grace. And if you sung Amazing Grace, every time we come into the house of God, I wouldn't get tired of it. Hey, we don't have to have new songs. I declare to you, there's nothing wrong with new songs as long as it's God there. But we don't have to have new songs. I never get tired of Amazing Grace. You say, but Brother Harley, you're just too old-fashioned. I may be too old-fashioned, but I declare to you tonight, it never grows old to me. Hey, the old way, the old past never grow old to me. I declare to you, praise God, those songs that never, never, never grow old. I love them. I love them. They stir my heart. From the time I got saved, they still stir my heart. And I declare to you, if we're going to be disciples, then we're going to have to die out to sin. We're going to have to lay aside the desires of sin. We don't have to let, allow God to work in our hearts and lives. As he told us over in Romans chapter 12. We're going to have to, hey, set aside and die out to those things of the world. Uh, the flesh desires the things of the world. The spiritual man desires the things of God. What do we think? can't be a witness in this world without feeding the spiritual man. He said, if, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. If you're ashamed of his word, then you're ashamed of him. And I declare to you, when a church, when a congregation comes together and they're bold for the Lord, something's going to happen. You know, I've never fooled dynamite, but I know just a little bit how it works. And, you know, back when I was growing up, and they was doing a lot of up in the mountains of North Carolina. And uh, they was doing a lot of blasting. Boy, we as kids was really interested in that. And we'd go and we'd see the dynamite caps and how that they had blowed up some of the rock. Uh, you know, they didn't have a lot of machinery then that they got now. Doing things just a little bit different. I think they still use dynamite. But nonetheless, we was real interested in that. But you know, they could take that dynamite and they could make a road where there was no road. And we marvel at, boy, man, they're going through this thing. Not going around it, they're going through it. You take a church that gets on fire for God, sold out to God, and allows the Word of God to work in them, it's like dynamite. Something's going to blow up. God will make a way when there is no way. People will stand back and they'll begin to say, Wow, they're going through that thing. I mean, they're not going around it. They're not going under it. They're going through it. By the grace of God, hey, if we'll, if we'll just band together and love one another and heed the Word of God and die up to self, and hey, if we'll esteem others better than ourselves as the Word of God proclaims, God will do great and mighty things in our midst when we begin to realize who we should put our emphasis on. Sanctification. Sanctification. The vast difference between sonship and discipleship. Where are we at? Where are we at? We are to make disciples of all men. But we know 
that truly, truly, as we study the Word of God, we know that God's will and desire is for us. I said for us to be sanctified. Set aside, and then as we are set aside for His use, our desire, our desires have to take back seat. Our desires have to take a back seat. God, what do you want? He plainly told us he would direct our path. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall. That's positive, isn't it? And he shall direct thy path. That's taking the back seat. That's saying, God, I'm going to die out to self, and I want you to take over. I want you to take over. I want to see your glory. I want to see great and mighty things. Now, in closing, I want to take you to John chapter 11. I believe it's verse number 25. Somebody correct me if it's not. But here Jesus is telling, he's telling Martha, he said, Said I not unto thee, if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Did I quote that right? Somebody tell me I'm not looking at it. Did I quote that right? Said I not unto thee, if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Are you following what I'm saying? Church is most of the exciting place upon the face of this earth to be. I can't understand a dead church. I can't. I can't understand a dead church. I can't understand for the life of me. I mean, I coming in and enduring a service. Hey, if you didn't enjoy it, why come? It ought to be the most exciting place that we've ever been is the house of God. Why? Because we're serving our living, risen Savior. He's not dead. He's alive. He's alive. Praise God. We just talked to him a little while ago. Hmm. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? I wouldn't want you to go to a dead church. We don't need to be dead. We need to realize we are serving a risen Savior. Said I not unto thee, if thou shouldest would have believed, thou should have seen the glory of God. Think on that. When we come into the house of God, well, you're talking about seeing some things. Mm, I never saw it on that fashion before. I never saw nothing like that before. But I declare to you, you're looking at it. You're looking at it on both sides of the of uh, the podium here. Do you believe that? Woo! Glory to God. Said I not unto thee, if thou wouldest believe, thou should have seen the glory of God. Isn't that what Peter, James, and John, they saw the glory. Now I declare to you tonight, you and I have to make that decision. Are we going to take up the cross daily and follow him? That's what he said. If you're going to be my disciples, you're going to have to take up the cross daily and follow me. That means sometimes that we're going to have to do things that we didn't really, the flesh didn't really want to do. I said the flesh didn't really want to do. We're going to be led by the Holy Spirit of God. I said I was going to tell you that in closing. i got to tell you this to go along. I had no intentions of hurting my wrist again. But, you know, I did. And uh, so I made an appointment with the doctor, the skin doctor. And uh, the first time I went, I tried to tell him about the Lord. And he acted like it made him mad. I mean, we all, we all kind of take it, you know, personal when, when we're kind of shunned. So he told me, he said, just let science take over. And so I thought, sure as world, I made him mad. 
So this time I thought, well, I ain't going to say a thing. And I forgot about I had my shirt pocket loaded with chick tracks. I didn't even think about it. There's a separate chick tracks in there. I've been walking up down the street passing out tracks before I went in. I got there early. And uh, so I didn't even think nothing about it. I, I, when the doctor come in and, and uh, before he sat down, before he sat down, he come over there and snatched one of those tracks out of my pocket. He said, and what's this? Now what I'm trying to tell you is I didn't start the conversation. And then he begins to talk about the, the Robin Williams, I believe it is. Said somebody said that God was missing in his life. He said, you know, I, I suppose it's, it's better to believe in God. At least you'd have a set of rules to follow. He said, what do you think about it? That's all he had to say. And so it, the nurse had come back in by that time, and she's standing over there filling out the paperwork, and I glanced up at her, and she said, and I was just giving him the gospel, and I probably went on for four or five minutes. I gave him my testimony, and I everything from Genesis to Revelation. I thought, how long is he going to let this go on? And after a while he said, I guess we better get back to worldly things. But now, wait a minute. That was a divine appointment. See, I, I didn't... Maybe I had to suffer this for that. I don't know. But I know the man was interested. What am I saying? I'm saying that even though that we get offended many times, don't give up. Don't give up. Just remember as you look and you see the important things are not in this world. The important things are on the other side. You don't have to endure church service. You ought to rejoice. We have to endure the things of this world but not a church service. That'd be awful, wouldn't it? I'm, I'm thankful that God is able to meet every one of our needs. I thank God tonight that we still live in a free nation and that we can have the privilege to come and assemble together. Don't take it for granted. It can be taken away from us. He said, oh, Brother Harley, this has been too long. That's right. As one of the senators said, I've got it copied, copied down in the front of my Bible says a U.S. Senator stated the average life of the great civilizations of the world is 200 years. He said they, pro uh, they progress through the following stages from bondage to spiritual faith, from spiritual faith to courage, from courage to liberty, from liberty to abundance, from abundance to selfishness, from selfishness to complacency, from complacency to apathy, and from apathy back to bondage. Where we at? beg of you tonight think about the message think about what the word of God has told us if you're going to be a disciple if you're going to see God do great and mighty things you're going to have to be a disciple sold out to you every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking around would there be one that's, uh, that would be in the midst of us tonight and say Brother Harley I'm not sure that if I died right now that I'd go to heaven and I want to slip up my hand